joins me now. Congresswoman, thanks for being here. Thanks for you, having me. You have worked with Mr. Ray. What's mm -hmm. your take on how he would handle the job as FBI director, and what's he like as a person? Well, you know, I worked at the Justice Department with Chris Ray when he was the chief of staff to Larry Thompson. Um, I was one of the counsels on Larry Thompson's staff. And he was the consummate chief of staff. He was someone who was there to do the work, um, to be responsible, does not look for the uh, flash and for the light, is really about the grind, really getting the work done. He is the consummate law enforcement officer and has made a life career of that. That's, that's who he is. Sounds that like that may explain some of why so many of your colleagues, Democrats, have come out already and said uh, they'll vote for him. And uh, I hope you'll forgive me. I want to change gears on you just a little bit because we mm -hmm. have some new video of President Trump. This is the first time we've seen him in public in several days. He did an interview uh, with CBN, talked about Vladimir Putin and Syria. Let's take a look at that and then we'll talk about it on the other side. Great. You went to the G20 and you met for the first time front face to face with Vladimir Putin. And uh, George Bush had once said he stared into his soul and came away satisfied. What do you think? Can we trust him? Well, look, we had a good meeting. Uh, I think we had an excellent meeting. One thing we did is we have a ceasefire in yes, a sir. major part of Syria yeah. where there was tremendous bedlam and tremendous killing. Mm -hmm. And by the way, this is now four days. The ceasefire is held for four days. Those ceasefires haven't held at all. That's because President Putin and President Trump made the deal, mm -hmm. and it's held. Now, I don't know what's going to happen. Maybe as we're speaking, they start shooting again. But this has held, unlike all of the other ceasefires that didn't mean anything. Uh, so that was a great thing that came out of that meeting. I think a lot of things came out of that meeting, mm -hmm. but I do believe it's important to have a dialogue. And if you don't have a dialogue, it's a lot of problems for our country and for their country. I think we need dialogue. We need dialogue with everybody. Sure. I had a great, it was a great G20. We mm -hmm. had 20 countries. I got along, I think, really fantastically with the head of every country. That assessment from President Trump about how the G20 went for him, saying he gets along. But uh, a lot of observers, longtime observers, came away from that conference thinking that the president was really a man alone, some calling it the G19. What's your take on what the president just had to say? Well, you know, I think that we have to be extremely cautious with Vladimir Putin. He has lied at every turn with every president in every administration. And so the fact that he may have, there may be a ceasefire in Syria right now does not mean that he is not behind the scenes doing other things to thwart the efforts of America in the Middle East. Um, I think that, that the president ha was right in that he has to have a discussion, but I think we need to be very clear-eyed about who Vladimir Putin is and who the Russians are. I'm disappointed that the president did not really go into or take at face value what Vladimir Putin had to say about their meddling in our elections. And I think that that's something that we're going to have to deal with, that the special prosecutor, as well as the FBI, our CIA, our intelligence agency, and indeed this administration and Congress are going to have to um, take note of and move forward with. Congresswoman, in some ways the paradigm has shifted here as this Russia story has unfolded. Republicans often traditionally Russia hawks, while uh, sometimes your party maybe has not taken as harsh a stance. And I, it seems walking the halls of Congress that uh, Democrats much more willing uh, to say things at least publicly. What, what is your sense about where your party is? Uh, have they moved? And what's it like behind the scenes in the halls of Congress? What is the conversation like? Uh, do you feel like Republican colleagues that you have that you may run into are are a little bit taken aback by any of this? And um, when you say taken aback, are you, which, which breaking news are we talking about right now? <laughs> I, I mean the story writ large. This is something that uh, has twists and turns that, you know, a lot of us are, uh, every minute you have to try and keep up with something new. I'm just trying to get a sense sure. from you of, uh, is there a sense that you, you all can't keep up with it? Uh, or sure. do, you, do you feel like you understand where things are? I mean, I think that there's, we, we are looking to our leadership on both sides of the aisles to really direct us in the messaging and where we're going to be pushing our efforts. But I think I have to say that I think that on both sides of the aisle, there's a great deal of frustration that we as members cannot get to the business of Congress that we have been brought here for. Um, I, from the Virgin Islands, am really concerned about economic issues that my constituents are concerned with. Listen, we have a uh, military authorization, um, reauthorization bill coming on the floor. We're 
were talking about our armed services um, this week and how do we fund that properly, the mechanisms that are in place. We all have amendments on those issues, and I think every member is concerned with that. I'm grateful that members are still working with each other across the aisle. This evening, I'm going to be meeting, uh, having a working dinner with my sister, uh, Jennifer Gonzalez, who's the representative of Puerto Rico, because we have issues that are in common and we want to support our people, um, both Republican and Democrats. And I think that's the case with all members of Congress. And I think that we're very frustrated um, by what's happening with the administration, with the uh, Russian uh, hack, with the ongoing issues and the lack of transparency. We've heard Trump Jr. say that he is being transparent, um, Donald Jr. talking about his transparency, but we know that that's not in fact true because what he said previously about his interactions with the Russians is not in fact now that we learned from our press having been the case. And so I think that members are looking for this to completely be over so that we can get back to the business of legislating and taking compare, taking care of the constituents that have brought us here. Congresswoman Stacey Plaskett, thanks very much for your time. Thanks so much for having me. Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is moving full speed ahead on.